I've just bought this McLaren, but I think I've made a big mistake. In fact, I know I have. The McLaren 720S is known for being one of the fastest driver-focused cars in the world. Oh my God! <laughs> That's 60, <laughs> that was 60 like that! And they just look incredible. So when I received an email from someone saying they had one for sale for less than half the price of a used one, I was in. But there's a catch. This one had been involved in an accident. And the other catch is not in this country. Here we go again. This is absolutely nuts. I don't know how it's came to this, but we're flying to another country to go and get another project. Let's do it. The country we're flying to, Amsterdam. Only a two hour flight from the UK and the car was located at a breaker's yard there. And it wasn't long till we arrived. No problem. Nice. This door's looking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh no. Jesus. Oh my god, there's like nothing to the door. Wow. <laughs> That's how light the doors are. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Get in. Well, the front looks good. Doors doesn't work. <laughs> okay, where do we start? Now, I obviously knew the car was damaged, but I didn't know to what extent. So before I committed on buying it, I wanted to make sure it was actually repairable. At the back, anything looking bad here? Any oil leaks? Oh. Oh. Oh God. It's quite bad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's bad when he says that. Whole <laughs> chunk out of this end here. Oh, oh is that part of the wing? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, my. oh, it's actually bolted on. It's not stuck on. The, the quarter, I don't know if you see that, Matt. See the box, the quarter's bolted on. But this is the part I was looking at. This bit here, this rear subframe, which holds all the engine and everything like that, where it bolts onto the monocot, that does look good. The rest of the car, not so much. <laughs> is the glass okay? Yes. yes. It's got a camera in the front. The front looks quite good. Oh, we're not really streaming. We're just looking and it's hard, but I'm sure you guys are assessing it as much as we are, but hopefully we're not the headlights missing okay anything. Outside, the headlights look yeah. expensive, but they do look good. Yeah, these I think let's get that wing off and see how bad it is. Yeah, we need to look behind. Because that is not good. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, we're missing something here. Yeah, there's a no suspension. <laughs> Oh my god, it's ripped the drive shaft out of the gearbox as well. Look, you see all the bolts here, look, they've all snapped off inside. So if you could drill them out and the rear subframe is actually good, it's just whether this is all bent up, like it's got a few dents in. The brake oh disc. My oh my. Jesus. I was about to say it's the brake disc okay, but I don't think it's going to be okay after looking at that wheel. Oh, look, there's a crack in the disc. Oh no. Carbon disc. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, that's not safe. Yeah. It's weird though because the wheel looks fine from this side and then on this side it's only, it's got a big dent in it. Yeah, I think let's get this off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Just like an F1 car, McLaren's monocoque is made from carbon fibre which makes it light and also really safe during an accident. Issue is, if there's any damage to that carbon then it's very unlikely that it can be repaired. So that's what we're looking for now. One minute. Hey! Banana or no banana? I, I couldn't tell when it was. It's definitely on. banana. It's, yeah, banana. it's had a hit here. But that looks like a replaceable part. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, the, it, it, it is welds. replaceable, but it's all the way replaceable from there, look. Yeah. <laughs> something was here. Something, yeah, something some was here. Some oh, yeah, like radiator, 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 radiator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's looking good. It's all good apart from that. Oh, airbag in there. <laughs> oh, there we go. Factory. Great, okay, perfect. But once we got the door open, we found the worst. Carbon fibre. There was some damage to the carbon fibre, hmm. but we wasn't sure whether it was the actual tub or just one of the covers. Oh, one down here. Oh, that's looking good. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -huh. 
Mm. It looks like it's actually damaged the tub, but I still don't think this is the end of it. I've seen people like my good friend Tavarish have his carbon tub repaired by the frame doctor out in the US. So I know it's possible. And with the price being so good, it still might be worth the risk. Everything in here looks fine. All good in here. It's just a shame about this area. It, one thing we do need to do is check it. And because we're in Europe, car vertical would still actually work whilst we're here. And all we need is the VIN number. Here we go. Exciting. All I'm kind of wanting to know is obviously it's crashed, but is there any outstanding finance? It's just checking through over 35 countries as we speak. Interesting. Whilst Chris is waiting for that to load, there's a Batman logo. If you could just see underneath the wing there. Oh yeah. Bat so it was Batman's car. Maybe Car Vertical would tell us that. Surprisingly, it wasn't Batman's car. Oh. But it did show us that the car's never been stolen and there's no outstanding finance. So we are all good to buy this thing. But I wanted to check whether this car started. On the... Oh yeah, the fuse on the battery. Yeah, yeah. the fuse, yes. Okay. Yeah. But as suspected, the pyro fuse, which cuts power to the engine when the airbags blow, has blown. Meaning we can't start the car. But the guy trying to sell it, who I've never met before, assures me that it runs. Mechanica from the McLaren dealer? Yeah. They let it run. Oh, okay, yes. so it has run. It has run. Oh, okay, yeah, my, that's my good. My colleague picks up the car there. Yeah. But he explained, he let the engine run, he tested the gearbox. Yeah, and it all seems good. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, good. And you can also call the McLaren dealer if you want. Okay. Now, Dutch people do tend to be trustworthy, so I will take his word for it. But if you're not dealing with the Dutch, then please do check the car out using Car Vertical before buying. The last thing you want to do is go out and buy a car like this Mercedes C-Class. I can see on the car vertical check that it actually shows up with a yellow light showing that it's been previously damaged. And when I scroll through the check, I can actually see the photos of when it was auctioned off at the car crash auction website. And then the photos of when it's been put up for sale afterwards, after it's been fixed. So to check your car, a friend's car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below and use code MAT for discount on the check as well. Let's get back to that McLaren. Okay, now I've got to make the decision on whether we're buying this. Uh, I think the carbon repair is the one thing that I'm slightly worried about, but I'm going to have to make that decision. I guess it all depends on price. When I got home, I sent some photos of the damage to a McLaren repair specialist. But they got back to me and said they need to see the car in person to see if they can repair it. Because they have to ask for McLaren's permission. And the only way for me to get the car to them in person? Well, was to buy it. I think Will Mania might be able to fix that. Oh, I'm not sure, Tony. My dad loaded the trailer up with the McLaren and set back home to the UK, where we would begin the build. Hey! Back! What did you do to it? <laughs> <laughs> it looks nice inside. Where do you start? <laughs> Have a look inside, looks lovely. Oh yeah, it does look lovely. Can you even get in it? Oh yeah, it's left hand drive. I'll tell you one good thing. What? The airbag's not gone off on the dash. There's the alternator. Well, if we put power to that, Oh, you see if that, that would might go up. straight through to the... That look, that's rough. Is that power? It's going to set it on fire. Yeah, that <laughs> it insured. How do you insure this when the insurance company is 720S? We wanted to see whether this McLaren actually started, but we couldn't even get in the car to start with because the doors require battery power to open. So we're trying to put some power to the alternator. I don't think it worked. That didn't work, so we needed to get directly to the battery, which was in the front boot area, which also needs battery power to open. But then we watched a video online on how you open the boot without battery power. You have to split open the key fob, and inside will be a manual key. Then just underneath the front air duct is a keyhole, which you can put the key in and turn to open the front boot. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, You've broken you. the key. Jeez, <laughs> but we had no manual key inside the key fob. Look, there is no key here. Oh, what? Scam. So are you supposed to get the bonnet open? Yeah, so the, the key, I think it's broke off in there. Let's get some point. <laughs> yeah, it's the way. It... Hey! Found the key. Where was that? 
<laughs> that was in the lock. How would someone put that in the lock and broke and it? And snapped it off. And that, you, I, I, I suggest getting a new kit. Straight in there, yeah. <laughs> 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 This is probably the biggest one we've done yet. Definitely. I would agree. That it's back definitely end, the biggest one. That we've back done end yet. is rough. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Right. Oh, that made a noise. Yeah. Oh, the dash is doing stuff. What? I didn't see it. Oh, I know what's happening. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, this is what happened in a DDE video. Shout out to the DDE lot. The battery will not have enough power off the jumper pack for it to do anything. It needs an actual battery. Really? Yeah, it won't do it. With that in mind, my dad started to take the battery out so he could charge it. But then he found something. What's going on, Tony? Yeah, you reckon? Oh my. Like that. Was that and, you? And down there, look. <laughs> oh my. Do you, think, do you think a rat might have been living in here? That is not good. <laughs> Tony said he thinks it's not a rat and it's something else, so He's about to show us what he's found. I'm not looking forward to this. You have to take all this out. Right. To get the, to the battery. Okay. Oh, it's a bit wet in there. Oh, yeah. what are the... Oh, it's a squirrel. squirrel isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Do you reckon it was two squirrels and they didn't like each other? Oh. <laughs> So it seems we have a Dutch squirrel. Hopefully it hasn't messed with any of the wiring down there. But once we charged up the battery, it was time to see if this thing starts. Why is it working? Look, the dash has gone up. Oh, the dashboard's in German. <laughs> <laughs> Mentioned Langelers. Mentioned Langelers. Ready? Fixed. Let's check oil. How do we check oil then? You've got to warm the engine up before you check the oil. That looks good. Uh, no kind of. Yeah. Oh, whoa, dude. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What's your budget for that rebuild? <laughs> <laughs> we've charged the battery up and we've got power. What does it say on the dash? How many days? Oh, yeah, the days. Yeah, yeah. The McLaren will show you on the dashboard how many days of charge the battery's got left. But if it's zero, it won't start. Oh, yeah, turn it 44 on. days. Then, uh, 44. Yeah! Come on! <laughs> how the hell do you check the oil without starting the car? Do you know how to do that? I don't think it's possible, so best bet is just to drain it completely. And then just refill and it. And put new oil in so you know you've drained out all the oil and you know the, the quantity. Yeah, because it's electronic and I think it doesn't even read until it's hot. Catch it a bit. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> right, I think we're good to start it. <laughs> okay, I'm taking the plastic out of the inlet. Is there any plastic in here? So we're going to attempt to start the car. But to start it, the car needs to recognise it's got brake pressure. And as we don't have a rear caliper on, there's no brake pressure. So what we're doing now is just clamping the brake hose, which needs to be replaced anyway, so that it will hold the remaining brake fluid in there and give us some form of brake pressure. I think this is going to start. I have faith. Do you think it's going to start? No. no. Tony, do you think it's going to start? Not if the power of fuse has gone. Pump that brake pedal, big boy. We can't see any oil leaks coming out the engine, and there's no lights on the dash saying low oil. So we're just assuming that the oil's okay. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was close. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> that sounds to me. Do you know what that sounds to me? Like the power of fuse. Because that tick is the solenoid. The solenoid but it won't send power to crank it over. Well, let's bypass the power issues. Let's do that. All the regular subscribers will know exactly what this is, but it sits here. Manufacturers like to put it in loads of different places, but luckily this one is in a good place. When the airbags blow, it breaks a fuse here, which stops power going to the starter motor, but we can bypass it. All this here, all the power is running along here, and these are all to the body electrics, but this this part here, going across to there, is for the starter motor. And because that part's broken, it won't send power to the starter motor. So all we're gonna do is bridge it because that's how we roll. So now I'm disconnecting the pyro fuse. You can see it here. And behind the blue cap will be a break in the metal. And all I'm gonna do now is take the wire which goes to the starter motor and bridge it over onto the live line which goes to the battery. <laughs> that is dodgy as anything. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> 10 out of 10. Thanks. I think you should just leave it like that. Yeah, it looks OEM. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, yeah, yeah, do you yeah, think yeah. it's because going to start? We can't because blame it, you. Yeah. You off. think it's going to start? Yeah. Yeah, first time. Yeah, I feel like a normal car would start right now. Burr McLaren. No. No. <laughs> if there's a leak, it's going to piss out somewhere, isn't it? So we'll just take, switch it off straight away. Okay. In all seriousness, after I press this button, it's going to decide how expensive this build's going to be. Because if, if it does rattle and it doesn't start or the engine's broke, then it's going to be so much more expensive. But I'm, fingers crossed... I, Fingers crossed the engine's good and then all we've got to do is repair everything else. Everyone I've just ready? checked the turbo, ready? the turbo's good, so you can Here we're going. Ignition is on. Any oil leaking out? Any fuel? No. No, the mechanics have said. Everyone no. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Tony, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm just scared I'm gonna get an airbag in the face <laughs> oh, or yeah. something. Oh yeah, I'm gonna stand back. <laughs> Here we go. No. Oh. Try and pump the brake pedal so you can get a bit more pressure on it. Whoa! Oh. Ah! oh, that didn't sound good. Whoa! Oh. It's coming out. Oh, yeah. Something's oh, coming out. Stop, stop, stop. I can't stop it's it. It's, it's get the battery off. Oh my, it's going mental. I can't stop it. <laughs> what oil is coming out? Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Where was the oil coming out from? That was not a good time to start the car. Oh no. Yeah, it started, it did start, it started up and then turned off and then I wasn't doing anything and it kept trying to start up. It was loving it, wasn't it? It was like, yeah, yeah, and then, <laughs> no. Where's, where's the oil come from? Engine. <laughs> oh, that hey. is not good. Oh yeah, that is. Oh my, yeah, oh, that is dripping. No. Oh, oh, no. oh yeah, it's coming out of an oil cooler. So yeah. because it's a dry sump, the oil sits in this container over here, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so all the oil would be there, and when I've started it, it's put pressure through it and pumped it out the cooler. So I think we should be safe. Well, why did it start? And then not start and start. And I think it's just a McLaren. I think that's just what. Oh, that makes sense. It yeah. just tripped out, I yeah. reckon. Yeah. But it turns out this oil wasn't coming from the engine. Oh, that smells. Wait. Is it a gearbox oil? Is it transmission oil? It could be. I think it's transmission oil. <laughs> it smells like transmission oil. Yeah, that smells like gearbox oil to me. Oh. I don't think we should take the risk. No, we're not. We. It's still, a gearbox on this is probably going to be more than the engine, isn't it? That cooler there... Oh yeah. ...is on the gearbox. So that's what could be what is dripping. Yeah, so we can't start the car with a gearbox oil leak because it's just going to throw oil out, is that right? So we still have no, we still have no conclusion to... The engine sounded okay, but we're not sure. The gearbox, we don't know. There's oil coming out of it. The frame, we're about to find out because now we're taking it straight to a place which is probably going to decide whether that tub's repairable or not. And we've got our fingers, our toes, uh, everything crossed that they can repair this. Else, I don't know what I don't know what's going to happen. The place we're taking it to is called Individual Specialist Cars, and they're a McLaren approved repair specialist. They have to ask McLaren's permission before they do any carbon repair. And just to let you know what's at stake here, I bought the McLaren for £60,000, which could be a good deal because bearing in mind the cheapest you can get one is around £130,000 here, but it all depends on this top. What are you wearing? If McLaren can't fix it, I'm a new McLaren technician. They don't know how bad the car is. So, <laughs> do we go in here? I think we're going here. This is going to be quite funny. This is it. This literally decides the fate of the car. If this tub can't be repaired, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I just hope they can do it. We uh, bought a McLaren. Were you in it when it happened? No, we just bought it. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> How much do you think it will cost <laughs> to repair this? To have that repaired. It's whether they can even repair it anyway, but I think a good repair, my budget for that repair, 
5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds, is that it? And it wasn't long until the technicians came out to assess the damage. This was the moment we'd been waiting for. <laughs> instant, instant no. <laughs> no, so so you, that's nothing nothing you touch then. What did we allow to now? Being being approved with something like that, you, 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 you all we can repair is about an area about that's big. Right, and right. That, that's all there, like, that yeah. underneath is worth it. Well, immediately it was a no. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> uh, now what then? We're going to have to uh, do some searching here. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Uh, Where would you start, Tony? He's going to say, take it back. <laughs> 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 You're like a drug there.